What is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. It is Thursday night, March the 29th, 2018. WrestleMania is a little under two weeks away. And the speculation on Braun Strowman's tag team partner for his tag team championship match at WrestleMania 34 is going absolutely crazy. It is running more wild than Hulkamania in the 80s. And the WWE wants to test our knowledge on WrestleMania itself. And we are going to take that test right here live today on the newest, fastest rising podcast in all of YouTube, baby! The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Let's do it. Alright, wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Nick Nightmare. Along with me, as always, is the world's greatest tag team, the wrestling god of thunder, Thor the Sledgehammer, and my little buddy, my best pal, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the entire freaking world, man. Blew the snowball, and we are here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, like we always are, to bring you the news even when there's no freaking news. There's really nothing going on. Everything is seemingly quiet on the road to WrestleMania right now. There have been no further developments or no further news released on the condition of Shane McMahon what his status will be, will he be ready in time for WrestleMania, there has been nothing further on that. All we know is Daniel Bryan has made the match, contrary to what we were reading on social media and all over the internet and in the news, with all these people reporting that Shane McMahon was not going to be at WrestleMania, everybody jumping the gun on that report, but that apparently is not the case. As this match is set to go, and there has been no further developments on that, that is the case as it stands. That match is going on. The biggest mystery surrounding WrestleMania right now, Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman's tag team partner. The speculation has been driving me absolutely insane. We have heard names like Elias and The Big Show. Neither of which I would really like to see, most especially in the case of The Big Show. Nobody wants to see him at WrestleMania at all let alone next to Braun Strowman. We've heard more retarded names like James Ellsworth. Why would that be a WrestleMania moment? Why would that be something worthy of a partner for Braun Strowman so he could single-handedly win the championships? I don't want to see anything like that. I don't need these gimmicky, mixed-up, oddball pairings, you know, these odd couplings that the WWE likes to do. I, I don't need any of this. And most recently, as of today... Justin Barrasso from Sports Illustrated, he wants to go out there and tell everybody Rey Mysterio is most likely going to be Braun Strowman's partner in this tag team matchup, making some sort of surprise WrestleMania return. Rey Mysterio himself has been vocal saying that he is not going to be at New Orleans for WrestleMania, but I am not going to take any of that seriously because we see the Hardys do the exact same thing last year, right up until the day before, telling everybody, I'm not going to be, we are not going to be at WrestleMania in any capacity, and then history shows the biggest reaction of the night went to the returning Hardy Boys just 24 hours after they said that. So you can't take what Rey Mysterio is saying right now any seriously at all. He could be telling the truth, and I hope that's the case because I do not want to see him as Braun Strowman's partner in this match. It doesn't make sense. It would be, what, just to get the big pop? And and what kind of a rub is Strowman going to get off of Rey Mysterio? He is already bigger than a Rey Mysterio to the modern audience. A lot of the people, yeah, we love Rey Mysterio, but that's Braun Strowman. He don't need Rey Mysterio. Braun Strowman's partner is Samoa Joe. That's who it should be. That's who, if I had my way, that's who I would pick. I, I could get by with an Elias. I don't mind that so much. You know what name nobody's talking about is, and would be just as big, I think, as a Rey Mysterio or any of these other names that we're talking about, is Neville. 
That's been all quiet on the home front, too. There's been absolutely no news on negotiations or anything with the return of Neville. You wanted a big-time comeback? You wanted to give him a little guy to make him look more dominant? You put Neville in there. Let him be on the WrestleMania card in a high-profile match for the Tag Team Championships. Let him win the belts with Braun Strowman, and then you could do something with them from there. Maybe you allowed Neville to remain on his little heel path, which was absolutely fantastic, while Braun Strowman's the big baby face, and there's your oddball pairing right there. And eventually that will implode. And it'll be great. It'll be much better to see, I think, even than Samoa Joe. I would love to see Neville return and be Braun Strowman's partner, but that's just wishful thinking. Like I said, there's been no news, it's just all rumors. See, like, I could say that to you right now, and then somebody else could pick that up and, and put plast that out on a dirt sheet somewhere. Oh, Sledgehammer TV claiming Neville is <laughs> Braun Strowman's partner. That's what it's like out there right now. Anybody that hears anything is just dropping everything and making a big story out of every little thing. I don't like to usually report on that kind of stuff because I, I need a little bit more concrete evidence. I want facts. Before I come out and say, well, you know, this guy thinks this, and, you know, Meltzer thinks that. I don't care what anybody thinks. I want to know what the hell's going on. And as soon as I know, you will know it. I don't think any of us is going to know. And if it doesn't happen on the Go Home Show, we're not going to know at all until WrestleMania. In which case, it should be a very big surprise. The level of a Neville or a Samoa Joe. That's what I would do. But otherwise, you guys, there's really been no news. So we're going to have a little bit of fun today, and we are going to test this out. Hopefully, this works. Because, you know, full disclosure, last time we took a survey and we filmed it while we were doing our little show, we had a lot of lag time. You know, WWE.com's website is just trash. There's just so much going on that it's, it's just so much for everybody's system to handle. Like, you got nine videos playing all at once in thumbnail form on the page and you got a never-ending scrolling page full of pictures and highlights and ads and it's just constantly, constantly straining your system off of one web page. So I don't know exactly how this is going to go down. We might scrap it midway through, but we will still let you guys see how far we go and what the hell happens. It may be a lot more entertaining than I intended to be for a more frustrating reason, but we're trying to have fun, and we are going to take the WrestleMania Trivia Challenge. All right, you you see it here? We are at this ridiculous, atrocious website. We are going to start clicking things, and hopefully all goes nice and smooth and we don't have too much of a wait time. If there's too much of a lag in between here and there or getting from one page to the next as you already see it's happening look how long it's taken me i clicked to tell you guys how well do i know wrestlemania right okay here we go look progress hopefully it's not a lot of questions and we won't have to go through all this waiting time i'm actually telling you right now if we don't get to this (laughs) this question within the next like 10 15 seconds we might not be going much further past question number one because it's just absolutely ridiculous I have top-notch internet speed, but I have a real shitty computer system. So when I do things simultaneously, this is often the result that I get. You see this big white screen of nothing? This is what I'm looking at, too. Oh, look, hey, check it out. A logo. <clears throat> so you know what? We're not going to take the entire trivia quiz. I don't. Oh, oh my God. There is 40 questions. You think we're going to sit here and wait like this for 40 questions? Hopefully this uh, this picks up in speed a little bit. And we can maybe get one or or two questions. Because I don't know how much bullshitting I can do in between all this waiting to keep you guys waiting with me as we watch nothing but a freaking black screen. Are you kidding me? I I don't want to watch a black screen. Do you? I don't. This is ridiculous. I, I can't do a quiz for you guys like this. Oh, check it out. Question one is almost loaded. Almost loaded. What are we on now? About half a minute to load the first question. Oh, here we go. Like let's let's take this first question. Which Mr. Money in the Bank became the first to successfully cash in his contract at WrestleMania. Weird that they would have The Miz in this picture where he's not even amongst one of the multiple choice answers, which is A, Seth Rollins, B, Shawn Michaels, C, Test. Why is Test there? Has Test ever even won the Money in the Bank? If he did, I certainly don't remember it. Test? Why'd they put that there? Because they're 
quizzing us. They're giving us a test. This is a test. And Triple H. Did Triple H ever win a Money in the Bank contract? Look at the ads popping up on us now. What the fuck? This is the problem. This is the problem with the WWE website. We all know the answer to this question is Seth Rollins. It's obvious. Mr. Money in the Bank. Was Shawn Michaels ever a Mr. Money in the Bank? Do you remember Shawn Michaels ever winning a Money in the Bank? Do you remember Triple H winning a Money in the Bank? Do you remember Test winning a Money in the Bank briefcase? What kind of answers are these? I'm glad I have this time to divulge and look at this. Let's try to get rid of this fucking ad. <clears throat> look at this. Let's analyze these choices now. Since it's probably going to take forever to get to the next screen. Let's see how long this takes. Maybe it won't be so bad. We're going to click the next button. Obviously, like I just told you. Hey, there we go. We got our answer. Seth Rollins. Maybe this won't be so bad. Let's go to the next slide, which is the next question. All right, so it's 20 questions and 20 answers. This will be much easier to get through. And it looks like it might run a little bit smoothly. I'm sorry for that little bit at the beginning. But let's get this thing Rolling. Which NXT alum was the lone superstar standing after he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 32? Once again, there are problems in these answers. When was the Big Show ever a fucking NXT alumni? So automatically, he's out. Mojo Rally was in NXT. Cesaro was in NXT. But we all know that... Oh, well, actually, they're going to trick us here because both Cesaro and Baron Corbin won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And the first one was Cesaro, which was WrestleMania 30. So it's got to be Baron Corbin for WrestleMania 32. Because he... Oh, wait. Mojo Rally was last year. That's WrestleMania 32. It was two years ago. Baron Corbin is your answer. Number three. Boom. Let's see what our answer is. If we're correct or not, yes, we are. Baron Corbin, by process of elimination. They tried to trick us there, and I thought I was smarter than this test, but they might actually try to get me with that. I'm trying to be a wise ass, and look at what it got me. Here we go. Question number three. Who has competed in more WrestleMania matches than any female superstar? Hmm, it's definitely not Charlotte Flair. I don't remember China competing in many matches at WrestleMania. I'm going to have to go with A. Trish Stratus. Let's check it out. Mickey James was not in that many WrestleManias. There you go. Our answer was correct. So far we're three for three. Let's check out the fourth question. Now that things are moving at a much better pace. Which NFL Hall of Famer once fought Bam Bam Bigelow in the WrestleMania main event? This is a no-brainer. A retarded monkey could give you the answer to this question even if he wasn't a wrestling fan. The answer is Lawrence Taylor. I don't have to read the other. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski. That's that's one of the choices here. When has Rob Gronkowski been in the main event of WrestleMania? William Refrigerator Perry. Maybe you can get him confused with Lawrence Taylor. But I definitely don't think there's much confusion there. And Ron Simmons. Ron Simmons, NFL Hall of Famer. Is I don't think he is. He is a WWE Hall of Famer. These answers are ridiculous. Let's keep this going. Let's get this train moving. And see if I, I don't have to see if I'm right because everybody knows LT versus Bam Bam Bigelow from WrestleMania 11. Fucking ridiculous question. How many F5s did Brock Lesnar need to break the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania 30? I'm going to say three. I remember it being three. I could be wrong, it could have been four, but I, I remember it taking three F5s. I'm pretty sure Michael Shit Cole said that. Let's see if that's the answer here. There we go, three. We are five for five on this WrestleMania quiz. Obviously, we know our shit one quarter of the way through this test. Let's keep the wagon train a rolling with the next question. I keep looking here because I have the question up on both screens, but I'm going to try to keep looking at you guys. He is looking at you, kid. Which rock and roll legends performed Triple H's entrance music at WrestleMania on two separate occasions? Gee, I wonder what the answer to this question is. 
Again, do I have to even look at the selections? Run DMC. Yeah, right. Limp Biscuit. No. Kid Rock. Wrong superstar. The answer is Motorhead and the legend, God rest his soul, Lemmy. Oh, my God. This, <laughs> their multiple choice selections are just absolutely ridiculous. Here we go. The answer, as we know, Motorhead. Yes, it's Spades. All right. That's enough of that. Let's get to the next question. Who is the only McMahon family member to win a match at WrestleMania? Who is the only McMahon family member to win a match at WrestleMania? None of them should be even in any matches at any WrestleMania, not even Vince McMahon. I'm going to come clean right now and tell you I don't remember which one of these three wrecks were victorious at WrestleMania. My head wants to say Shane McMahon. I don't remember Vince or Stephanie ever coming out victorious at the grandest stage of the mall. We're going to go with Shane McMahon, I believe, when he beat Vince McMahon at WrestleMania. There we go. Vinnie Mac. Was not the answer. Shane O'Mac is what I meant to say. Shane McMahon. So even when I'm unsure, I'm correct. Let's keep going. Try to get through this thing. Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels raised the stakes for their intercontinental title match at WrestleMania 10 by competing under what stipulation? Are you kidding me? Is this a test for people with no brain at all? They should give this test as a standard test to the people in the creative team. Because if you don't know the answers to these questions, you shouldn't be writing about wrestling, talking about wrestling. <laughs> these are the most idi idiot questions I've ever seen. Idiotic questions I've ever seen. It's, it's, they're so bad they're making me come off as an idiot because my, my words are just not coming out right because they are dumbing me down with the level of difficulty of this quiz. Are you shitting me? We all know it was a ladder match. Next. Are you absolutely... I was actually there. That's the best part. WrestleMania 10, I was in that crowd for that match. Absolutely fucking amazing. Next question. Please. Question number nine. Charlotte Flair became the first women's champion at WrestleMania 32 by forcing which female superstar to tap out? Sasha Banks, Ivory, Ivory, really? Becky Lynch and Bailey. Now, this was a triple threat match, was it not? Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair. Hmm. I don't remember. We are going to. Who lost that match? Hmm. Hmm. Gonna go with. We're gonna go with Sasha Banks. I think we're wrong. I think it's gonna be Becky. Yep, Becky Lynch. Damn it. That was my gut instinct, and I did not go with it. But whatever. I don't remember the finish of WrestleMania 32's women's main event. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Maybe I was. Not paying that much attention. Which larger-than-life superstar was John Cena's first WrestleMania opponent? It was not Batista. It definitely was not The Undertaker. Kane is not a larger-than-life superstar to anybody anymore. Back in the day, he was, but it definitely was not Kane. It was the big show that I believe was for the United States Championship, even, for John Cena's first-ever WrestleMania moment. Let's check it out. Make sure I am correct, because I am. There we go. Big show. Halfway through this thing, let's keep it going. Next question. Thank God it's not 40 questions. I couldn't have done this, you guys. I would have just totally been like, no. Oh, wait. This is an advertisement page. Screw you, WWE. Boom. Next. Advertisements. How dare you. True or false? 
The Rock's victory over Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 19 marked the only time the Texas Rattlesnake ever lost one-on-one -on -one to the Great One via pinfall. Now, if this is pertaining to WrestleMania alone, I know that to be an absolute fact. I don't think... I think that's true. I think that is a true statement. I believe that's true. And it is. It is true. I know that this was the the third match of a series where he had not been able to defeat the Rattlesnake at WrestleMania. I don't know if that pertains to anything outside of WrestleMania. I'd have to really go back in, in notes and in the history books to check that one out. Question number 12, which TV personality has appeared at WrestleMania as a guest interviewer and in-ring competitor? A, Kim Kardashian. B, Snook. Snooky. <laughs> the Snooks. Maria Menounos. And Nene Leakes. Now, I don't know what a Nene Leakes is and I don't want to know. If you know who she is, good for you. Keep it to yourself. I don't give a shit. Kim Kardashian, I wish I never heard of her, and I wish I never knew who she was. Snooki, I have come to uh, to kind of have some sort of a, a connection with. I, I enjoyed her post-Jersey Shore. I, I just, I don't know. Maybe that makes me weird. Maybe it's just the New York guy in me. I don't know. She's all right. Maria Minuronos is the answer. That is your answer. Although Snooki... Did compete at WrestleMania. She was not a backstage interviewer. She was the interviewee. The other two were never competing in WrestleMania. Maria Menounos is your answer. There it is. What did I tell you? Kelly Kelly. <laughs> Next. How long did it take Sheamus to seize the World Heavyweight title? From Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 28. What the hell was it? 18 seconds? <laughs> God. Yeah, let's go with 18 seconds. Or was it the lowest number on here? 14 seconds? Whatever. We'll go with... Uh, I thought it was 18. We'll go with 18. It'll probably be wrong. Just because I'm not... Oh, look at that. Look at that. The noggin always knows. 18 seconds was correct. Always trust your instincts, you guys. Don't apologize for your own instincts because 99.9% .9 of the time, it will be the right answer. Bart Gunn's bid to upset Butterbean at WrestleMania 15 ended in less than a minute during the final battle of what infamous WWE tournament? Now, anybody that was alive during that time would know the answer to this question. Another asinine question with asinine answers to choose from. King of the Ring? Obviously not. Wrestling Classic? And Gold Rush? No. This was the Brawl for All, WrestleMania 15's biggest debacle, the first time ever I've ever seen the WWE truly embarrassed on the grand stage of them all, and they could do Absolutely nothing about it. It was friggin' hysterical as Butterbean knocked the hell out of Bart Gunn. He knocked him completely out of the WWE altogether at the Brawl for Roll. Let's keep the party going with the next question. What WWE Hall of Famer competed in four WWE title matches across back-to-back -back WrestleMania events? Kurt Angle... Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kevin Nash, or Yoko Zuna. It is definitely not Kevin Nash, that's for sure. Yoko Zuna was not in four consecutive title matches. I am going to say Stone Cold Steve Austin. No, I'm not so sure. I believe it's Stone Cold. Might be Kurt Angle. Oh, no. It is Yokozuna. Look at that. I was wrong. Four consecutive title matches. I don't think I truly understood how I read that question. They didn't, I guess, have to be championship matches. But he did have two matches in one night. 
It did not have to be victorious. I am not going to try to find a reason why I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong there. All right. So we were wrong twice so far. Which decorated tag team made their long way to WWE return at WrestleMania 33 to compete in the Raw Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way match? We just talked about this at the start of this show when we were talking about Rey Mysterio. The Hardy Boys is your answer. We're not even going to waste any more time on this one. We're going to click the results page as well. Yes! Oh, I'm covering the greatness. I am covering the woken wisdom. Let's... Yes! Yes! All right, let's... <laughs> I'm sorry. Next. Let's get back to this. Hopefully I didn't mess up our internet feed. Okay, boom. Next question, please. Roll them. What day of the week did WrestleMania 2 take place? This is more of the kind of question that I was expecting because not everybody is going to know the answer to this question unless you are a real true wrestling fan and you know your stuff. And the fact of the matter is, WrestleMania 2 took place on a Monday. Way, way before the days of Monday Night Raw. Sunday was occupied by, I believe, the Oscars or some sort of big event, and they did not want to go head-to-head, -head, I believe, with that. And on top of that, I believe it was a venue and booking thing where they had to do it. And this event was held across three different venues, and it all took place on a Monday night. That was definitely raw for the early 80s. Monday night, Wrestle. Mania. How about that? If you didn't know, now you know. And you know I was right. Next question, as we seem to be winding down to the end of this list. Question number 18. Who retired after losing the Intercontinental title to Rey Mysterio in less than 30 seconds at the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania? This is one of the happiest moments of my life watching this. Because I am not a fan of JBL. I never really was. And this was a great moment, not just for me, but for Rey Mysterio and the entire WWE Universe. JBL retired after he lost in such less than spectacular fashion on his end. Let me show you I'm right. Boom. J.B. Lizzle. Lyndon B. Johnson himself. Waste. Great heel. I just, I was just never on board the JBL bandwagon. I was an Eddie Guerrero guy. Maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. Which former MMA champion served as the special guest referee for Bret Hart's controversial clash against Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13? This is another case where these answers that they have given us to, cho to choose from are just ridiculous. Was Ronda Rousey even born? For WrestleMania 13? That she's one of the selections on this list? Why? Just because she's an MMA name? Come on. Royce Gracie? You couldn't have put down there? Holy shit, you guys. Is that even logistically possible? I wish I had the time to go look and see if Ronda Rousey was born in the year of WrestleMania 13. My God. Brock Lesnar wasn't around in the WWE just yet. Dan Severn was... But he was not that big of an MMA force in the WWE, nor was he ever a referee at WrestleMania. I don't know if he was ever even at a WrestleMania to begin with. Your answer is Ken Shamrock. What ridiculous choices. Ronda Rousey? Are you kidding me? And if she did show up, did she have pink eye back then too? My God. All right, you guys, looks like this is it. Question number 20, finishing up this Trivia, which Evolution alum tapped out to Daniel Bryan's WWE Championship clinching yes lock at WrestleMania 30? It was not Randy Orton. It was not Ric Flair. Triple H was already dispatched earlier in the night, and it was Big Dave Batista that tapped out to Daniel Bryan and gave us the greatest moment in WrestleMania history. So there you go. Out of 20 questions, we got two wrong. So what do you figure? That's about a 90%. So we still got an A on this quiz. You can try to quiz us all you want. You can give us ridiculous choices. And you could try to stump us with stupid number questions and, and things like that. 
but we will always come out on top because the hammer was dropped on the WrestleMania Trivia Challenge. Thank you guys for indulging this nonsense as we have a little bit of fun. Thank God that it worked as smoothly as it did. After the way it started out, I thought for sure that we were going to wrap this up real quick and we weren't going to get through this quiz. And I want to thank you guys for sticking with me through the technical difficulties and getting through this ridiculous test. This was a, a stupid test. This really was. A, a deaf, blind ape that has never seen any wrestling in his life could have answered these questions right just by, by pointing randomly. He would have got the question right probably 9 out of 10 times. What a ridiculous ridiculous quiz that was. I expected better. I expected better. But uh, that's what happens, right? We expect better of them every Monday and every Tuesday, and we don't get that either. So, you know, what should we have expected? Let's close this window out so we don't get any technical difficulties here. We got all kinds of windows and shit open. What is going on? All right, let's close this down. Thank you guys so much for joining me for that fun little trivia quiz and the little bit of news, if you want to call it that, that we had at the beginning. Don't forget to get your eyes on everything else we put up on the channel this week. Our Raw review, our SmackDown review, which have been on fire since we have been on the road to WrestleMania. We brought the hammer down on both of those. We had to bring the hammer down on WrestleCrate once again, although not so hard because as their box was very, very good this month, that Wrestling Club remains your subscription box showdown champion, and we posted that one up yesterday. Make sure you get your eyes on that one if you missed it, and keep your eyes peeled to this channel all week long as WrestleMania is vastly upon us. The clock is ticking, and the days are going by like hours, and before you know it, it is going to be upon us, and this channel is going to have you covered. We are going to have your NXT preview and review. WrestleMania official preview. We are going to have a couple of WrestleMania specials going up throughout the week, just like this little trivia special we got coming at you guys right now. In lieu of the news, we look to have fun, and we're going to have a couple of things coming up on the channel all week long. We picked up a Switch today, so I'm going to go and play me some Breath of the Wild, and I want you guys to do the same if you have a Switch, but if you don't, Stay right here at Sledgehammer TV and click and watch every single thing that you have missed this week. WrestleMania is heating up, and so are we, and the hammer is coming down. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are not already a member of the Sledgehammer Club. It is growing by the day, and I need you to come on board with the hundreds that already know where to go. When they need their wrestling news and they need it with truth and honesty and no holding back as the hammer comes down every Monday, every Tuesday and following every pay-per-view, I am here for you and you guys can be here for me. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, let me know you liked this video, hit the thumbs down if you didn't, I don't really give a shit anymore at this point, as long as you guys are interacting and you're clicking things, I'm good with that, because it's gonna get me where I need to be, right at the top of the YouTube wrestling community, and all of you subscribers that have been with me and are still with me to this day, make sure you guys keep sharing this video as much as you can throughout all of the places that you guys could put it, just keep it clean. Don't put me anywhere that you wouldn't want to be. And make sure you share me all over the world. And let's get more people to join the Sledgehammer Club as we aim to take over the world. Thank you so much. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is Thor, the wrestling god of thunder. The official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. My little buddy. The world heavyweight champion of microphones blow the snowball and i the legend nick nightmare this has been the sledgehammer wrestling show that is gonna do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time right here on the sledgehammer wrestling show this was a good one fun one thank you guys for being here and uh by the way shirt <laughs> Thank you.